most people that I'm seeing have, you know, chronic issues, right? So there's layers upon layers of things going on, not just physiologically, but also mentally, you know, all these psychosocial, somatic family, all this stuff is going on, right? right. So we just kind of peel back the layers of the onion and address what we can, right? <laughs> right? And sometimes even just little things, just addressing something, you'll notice everything shift. I'm not saying just do energy stuff and, you know, don't do anything else. Like, no, do all the sciencey things, do all the Western things and do this in addition, you know, not, you don't have to take anything out. And then, you know, it's kind of like, you know, just be introduced to getting to know and become aware of your own energy. Right. And then you'll start to have more of an intuition about what your body needs versus just following the protocol of what you're supposed to do to make your body better and fix your energy. It's like, nobody knows what you need for your energy except for you. So tell me a little bit what your background is and what it is you do. Uh, I'm a physical therapist. Uh, I'm a, I have my doctorate in physical therapy. Um, I've been a physical therapist um, since 2005. Um, and um, you know, initially I started off focusing on, um, you know, orthopedics and, you know, that's kind of the way we're taught to practice, like just very, um, you know, this is your shoulder. These are the muscles related to your shoulder. And this is how you uh, rehab shoulder pain. Um, so, you know, that's how most people start off, right? You start very focused. And then the more you gain experience, the more you start broadening uh, how you look at the body and how you look at how the body's functioning. Um, so now I tend to have a little bit more of a holistic physical approach to how we look at dysfunction. And yeah, so that, that kind of, that ability to open my eyes to um, the body as a whole, um, then allows you to see, you know, more than just the physical body as being part of the whole, you know, now you're looking, you know, eventually you look at, you start noticing people's like uh, energy, you know, I do Reiki. So, you know, you notice energy patterns um, that exist. That idea of, you know, energy and like chakras and stuff was new, but it was interesting. Um, so, you know, I took, I took a course, I got attuned and, you know, really over the next 10 years or so, I just started, I was just using it on myself you know, just kind of, you know, when I would be stressed out, okay, how do I bring myself back down? Right. right. Um, but, you know, recently I started my own practice and the goal was to try to one, be able to spend more time with patients to look at their really analyze their whole body, right. Like in terms of how is, how is their body moving as a whole, like, instead of just looking at shoulder pain and just looking at your elbow pain. Um, and then also, you know, I wanted to be able to kind of uh, address people's energy as well, like, you know, or um, be able to teach people how to also be aware of their own energy, too. Um, I mean, the idea of energy, is that something that you've always been on board with, like the, the, the idea of or more than just the physical body? Or was that something that you really were introduced to when you started, um, you know, on, on your, on your medical practice? Yeah. I, I don't know if I ever thought about energy before, um, like when I was in school. Um, but it's one of those things you learn about it and then you have that, just that feeling of like, yeah, that sounds true. <laughs> you, okay. know? Like, you know, it's not, it, you know, you know, when, sometimes when you learn about, you know, the energy modalities and, um, you know, it, it's this thing where it's like, you want to logic it, because it sounds true, <laughs> you know, okay. but, but there's something deeper in it that resonates with you. And then you're like, yeah, like that, that feels right. Like that sounds right. Um, you know, and you know, I have patients ask me that all the time too. Like, you know, so what do you, what do you think of energy? And I'm like, well, you know, it's, I don't think it's something we need to believe in. It exists. Um, okay. it's whether or not you're, you know, whether you want to address it or not, you know, do you think, most people feel that uh, the energetic part of their body is true. Like that, that there's really something to that. I think, um, I think some, some people are aware of it and for other people, once 
we bring it to their attention, once we can, um, once we can help them become aware of it, if they, if they want to be aware of it, um, then they're able to feel it and they're able to get in tune with it. Um, and, you know, I, makes sense. you know, I just recently moved back to the DMV. I was, uh, you know, Maryland, Maryland, DC, Virginia area for people okay. not from the area. Gotcha. Um, I was living upstate New York for a while. And, and the more I talk to people about energy work, um, patients, friends, family, like the more we talk about it, people are, people are open to it and open to like understanding it and wanting to learn about it. And I think there's more of a conversation that people are willing to have about it. Um, which is why it's, you know, you know, something like Carbo Hub is pretty exciting because it's like, okay, like here's a space where you're, you can learn about other, you know, not just like, you know, all these other modalities that exist that address right. different aspects of energy work. And right. like, you know, what is the purpose of energy work, right? Like it's to balance ourselves out, right? And essentially from a physical therapy perspective, we're looking at the more balanced your uh, energy is, the more uh, still you're able to get your mind, you know, like basically like the calmer you are, like the, the more um, centered you are, then the easier it is for your body to heal itself. You know, like if your body is, if you're constantly stressed out and you're constantly, you know, you're going your day with no sense of uh, mindfulness and you're just, your thoughts are just going, going all day. Well, that's for most people, putting them in a stress response and keeping them in some stress, low grade stress response all day. Well, if mm. your body's in a fight or fight stress response, how much energy is going to healing my shoulder, right? That makes sense. You, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, the capacity for healing this is not the priority. It's trying to deal, your body's trying to deal with this, you know, stress response that's going on. And that makes sense. Um, I mean, I, I get that. I don't know of too many people that would say that that is not true. And yet that is kind of energy, you know, that, that is mm -hmm. energy based, but when you start talking about like uh, chakras and um, and your energetic core or energetic being, um, there's I probably have a lot more old friends mm -hmm. and certainly family members that they're just not on board with that. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, so it's you just know, completely I think, foreign to them. I think there's a space for, we have to meet people where they are, right? Like, so mm -hmm. yeah, if you don't want to. I don't want to convince you about chakras. It doesn't matter if you believe in them, you know, your, your reality is based on what you want to believe. Right. But sure. what, we, what we can do though, is teach people, like make people aware, like, okay, when you're stressed out, like if you think about uh, an event that really irritates you or really bothered you or that last time that family member really pissed you off. Right. Well, think about it and really just go back to that moment and now see what's happening in your body. You'll find you'll feel the anxiety build up. You'll feel your heart rate start to increase, right? So just from that example, we can see how, okay, our thoughts are able to trigger this kind of physiologic that makes response. Sense. So that in that way, you could say response. something like meditation would be a good practice or just quiet or walking through the park or the woods. Right. Um, whatever sense, it is right that mindset. allows, yeah, whatever it is that allows you to get out of that response and center yourself. So for some people, it's breath work, right? For some people, it's meditation. For some people, it's like yoga. For some people, it's just, you know, listening to music, you know, going for a walk, like just connecting with something that brings you into the present moment and takes you out of the thoughts that are, that will continue to go on unless you gain control over them, right? So it's kind of like, how do you gain control over your thoughts? What are some tools we can help you learn so that you're, so that you are controlling your thoughts versus your thoughts control you in your day. Right. 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 Cause otherwise, you know, the fight I had yesterday is going to be what's happening in my body all day today. Right. It's like, let the, let yes, yesterday's fight stay. That's yesterday's problem. What's that got to do with me today? <laughs> right. <laughs> today, Rena right. needs to heal her shoulder. Right. <laughs> like, so how to learn we, to live in the now. Right. You know? And so it's like, how do we bring people into like that, that sense of um, presence, stillness, you know, those are things that we can teach people. And, and from a physical therapy perspective, the benefit of you being able to do that is we can speed up the shoulder healing, right? If okay. your body has the capacity to heal itself, because our bodies naturally have an amazing 
capacity to heal itself. But if it's not able to heal it efficiently, well, what else is going on that's maybe preventing that from happening as, you know, maybe efficiently as it could? And let's work on, you know, let's control the controllables, right? We can't control everything going on. You know, most people that I'm seeing have, you know, chronic issues, right? So there's layers upon layers of things going on, not just physiologically, but also mentally, you know, all these psychosocial, somatic family, all this stuff is going on, right? right. So we just kind of peel back the layers of the onion and address what we can, right? <laughs> right? And sometimes even just little things, just addressing something, you'll notice everything shift, right? Because everything in our life is really, everything overlaps and everything, you know, if we're having a bad day or we're having a lot of pain, we're having a bad day, we're you know, our capacity, our tolerance for, you know, bullshit is lower, right? Like, right. <laughs> that's correct. So it's like, you know, it's kind of like, all right, how do we increase our, our capacity for the day, for my pain, for whatever? And so what are some of the things that you, um, I guess, prescribe or recommend for people to help lower that, um, that irritation threshold? Yeah. So, um, you know, I think part of it is kind of seeing where someone is, right? Like how open are they to learning some techniques? Cause some people right. are like, you know, somebody has to be ready for a shift, right? Because if their stress is part of their identity, right? Like I'm the stressed out person and my life is so serious and I've got all this serious stuff going on. Well, then they're not really ready to, to change. Right. Like, so you have to see like, is, is your stress something that is part of your identity? Because then I can teach you the technique, but is, are you going to do it? Do you care about it? No, if, if your stress is part of your, part of your identity, essentially, right? But if you're a person that's like, I don't want to be stressed, like, I mean, not just on paper, but you really don't want to be stressed, right? Like, and you're ready to, you know, and you're open to learning some things and ready to shift into a new mindset. Well, those are the people that essentially we can help, right? Like, you got to be ready to, shift or, you know, some, you know, sometimes the people have to be in that state where, you know, they're, when they're in that space of suffering, almost where you're just kind of like, there has to be something else, right? right. Like what else, this, this can't be it. What else can I do? Those are the people that like, you know, are so like exciting to talk to. Cause it's like, Oh, like let's introduce this whole other thing. Like just try one thing that resonates with you. Right. And then from that, you know, it's not about, oh, like, you know, you know, there's no, um, there's no algorithm of first you do this, first you do acupuncture, and then you do this, then you do Reiki, and then you go see Different shaman. things are going to resonate with different people. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, and, and the amount of. So what's kind of it, like if someone seems to be open, let's say that they're not very familiar with it, but they're, let's say they're wowed and excited about it and they want to go down this journey and they're, they're right. just waiting to hear what comes out of your mouth as to a recommendation. What, what would you say is the first step? I mean, I agree with you that it's not this or this or this, but as a general sweeping rule, do you say, Hey, well, why don't you try getting some Reiki or have you tried considered acupuncture or are you, you know, cranial sacral therapy or like, what's the, what's the version that you usually propose um, if someone is, is open and ready? Yeah, that's tricky, right? Um, I mean, everyone, you're, everyone's different. You do Reiki, so are you yeah. like, hey, you want to taste? Let me, let me Reiki yeah. you. <laughs> I mean, do you do that or um, do you refer it out? Sometimes it's, uh, you know, I, sometimes it's just intuition of like just for me when I when I'm not sure what to do or when there's a question like that, being able to just kind of quiet myself to feel like okay, what comes to mind for this person? Um, the things that you know the things that come to mind are the things I know how to do in, you know, for the most part, or well, not always. Sometimes it's like, you know what, I think you should see this kind of therapist. Um, you know, if you're open to it, I know somebody, you know, so sometimes that's, that's the thing. Um, but usually uh, my goal is to empower people to um, be aware of their own energy. So I might teach them like a simple um, way to, feel their internal energy themselves, you know, like, um, you know, one exercise I often teaches like, okay, like if you're, if you're sitting, you know, and your hands are, you know, still and on your lap, can you feel the energy in your hands without moving your fingers? Can you feel the energy in your hands? Right. And, okay. and 
a lot of people, the initial response is like, nope, nope, don't feel it. And I'm like, it's okay. <laughs> It'll take a few minutes. Like just kind of sit and focus. Don't worry about, you know, well, I don't know if I feel it. You know, maybe it feels like warmth. Maybe it feels like tingling. Maybe it feels like, you know, whatever it feels like for you. Um, and, you know, when, when people really kind of quiet into that idea of like, all right, there's no, it may take several minutes. Let me just sit here and just see if and focus. Almost everyone eventually can feel, feel it. Right. And that itself is pretty powerful for people because they're like, oh, oh, I do feel something. And when you're really focused and you're really in the present moment, what does that mean? You're also not in your thoughts, right? So that's a way, like, you know, I had one person that was like, oh, it's so, so peaceful. And I was like, yeah, like that, that's great. And if that resonates with you in terms of like feeling a sense of peace, like this is an easy technique you can do throughout the day, every hour, set a timer or every two hours or every whatever, you know, just, just do it periodically during the day. Cause like a 10 minute meditation in the morning and then you're stressed out for the rest of the 24, 23 <laughs> hours, right. 0.75 hours. Well, you know, like that's, it's better than nothing. Right. It's, but it's also better than nothing, yeah. it's better than nothing. Let's start there. But also like, maybe you can just have breaks during your day of the breaks within the stress, <laughs> Because the more you practice it, then the more uh, natural it becomes. And then the easier it is to do on command, you know, because then the trick well, is I like, you, it's, it's so yeah. exciting for me when someone discovers this, like that mm -hmm. this is actually something they have some control over or can be more involved with and, and embrace. Um, I have a friend of mine who, so she's just, she's um, studying to be a nurse. You know, she's, relatively open to energetics. She does, she's been to an acupuncturist and it's been successful, but you know, the other day she had a headache and her feet were bothering her. And I was like, Hey, would you like me to send you some Reiki? You know, cause it's non-local. So I don't need to be there next, right next to her by her side. I can send it, which is, you know, that's kind of mind blowing. But anyway, I was like, can I send you some, some energy? She's like, can you do that? I'm like, absolutely. That, Yes, that's the, that's the way it works. In some yeah. weird way, that's that's the way it works. She says, yeah. "Well, I sure uh, you could do that, but but I believe in Western medicine." And I said, cool. "That's fine. There's nothing <laughs> wrong with Western medicine." Yeah. Um, and and also energy. Th this energy can be sent to you in addition to the fact that you <laughs> believe in Western medicine. Right. Um, so she was kind of letting me know, you know, kind of giving me the hand on some level, but I was reassuring her that. Um, mm -hmm. you know, she, regardless of, of her belief system, she can also receive energy because that's what we all are is energy. Um, so I was working on her for about, as you know, she was actually sitting and watching a, a TV show and uh, so really not paying much attention. And I started uh, sending her this, this energy. And then she texts me and she says, Oh my God. And I was like, what? <laughs> she mm -hmm. says, my tummy is like rumbling and churning and moving around. And she says, that's what happens when I get acupuncture. And my acupuncturist says that when that happens, that's the energies moving in my, in my body. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yes, that's exactly right. I said, right. now what's crazy about this is I'm sitting in my living room in Baltimore and you're in Annapolis and you are feeling my intention in your belly. Actually, it's going throughout your whole body, but for whatever reason, mm -hmm. uh, the same is true for me. I usually feel it in my belly as well. Mm -hmm. um, that's where she's feeling it. And it completely, I mean, it threw her for a loop. I mean, it still throws me for a loop. I think it's just ridiculous how it works, right? But it, but it does work. And right. now what you have is this person who's studying to be a nurse, having an aha experience about um, energy medicine, like how energy works and how it can help because she did feel better. Right. And so if, if more people can be introduced to this sort of healing practice, um, you can use that in addition to Western medicine. Right. Um, in some cases you can use it instead of, but it's, it makes for an amazing complementary method as well. Yeah. And um, anyway, so I, I was very proud of myself. <laughs> Like yeah, <laughs> that is great. Yeah. Right. You know, and it's, yeah, it's just kind of like, you know, it, it's use it as an adjunct, you know, nobody, you know, nobody's saying to stop taking the med. Like, I'm not telling you to stop taking your meds, not do like, 
I still need you to do your exercises, do your stretches. I'm not saying just do energy stuff and, you know, don't do anything else. Like, no, do all the sciencey things, do all the Western things and do this in addition, you know, not, you don't have to take anything out. And then, you know, it's kind of like, you know, just be introduced to getting to know and become aware of your own energy. Right. And then you'll start to have more of an intuition about what your body needs versus just following the protocol of what you're supposed to do to make your body better and fix your energy. It's like, nobody knows what you need for your energy except for you. Right. Right. So how do we get, and that's, you know, that's why I'm, I'm putting together karma hub because I want people to have a choice. There's so many crazy choices out there. And Mm -hmm. it's really about, I feel like the first step is go through in the case of karma hub, you can go through the videos and, see what kind of resonates, what seems to make most sense to you, or maybe doesn't make sense, but intrigues you the most. And then you can pick up the phone or email and talk to that person and be connected with that person. Mm-hmm. And, and then take that as far as you want to take that. And, you know, mm-hmm. oftentimes you can learn these, these methods yourself, and then you don't have to pay anybody. You right. can do it yourself um, and just, you know, benefit from it. Right. Yeah. I mean, I tell, you know, like people that I do Reiki regularly on, I'm just like, if you feel like this is helpful, you know, maybe you should get a Reiki level one certification, you know, Mm -hmm. and just do it on yourself. You know, like, I mean, obviously I love being able to treat you, but also, you know, you can do this yourself and now you don't need to rely on me. If you, if you know, if you learn a modality that's really helpful for you, you know, like, great. Now learn it for yourself and, you know, I mean, there's still, there's still a benefit of like, even for me, like having Reiki done on me, you know, I still love it. Like having someone with experience doing it on me, even though I can do it on myself. Mm -hmm. Um, So anyway, yeah. Yeah. You know, allowing people to be, become aware of their, their own energy and empower people to, um, you know, be active in it. And yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been attuned with Reiki for about 10 years now, almost that. And I wouldn't consider doing it to anybody else. It was only either me, uh, my son, or my dogs. And that was it. You know, I had no, um, no thought about working on anybody else. Now, these days, occasionally, my friends will call me up and be like, hey, my head hurts or whatever. And I, you know, do that. And they seem to benefit from it. And I think that's pretty fantastic. Right. Um, but it's, I got attuned to help myself and I recommend everybody to do the same, to, uh, to do the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm with you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I mean, one thing that I noticed, like, um, from a physical therapy perspective in terms of like people's bodies is like, uh, sometimes, you know, one thing Reiki can be really helpful with, and it doesn't have to be Reiki, it can be any modality is you know, a lot of times people have like uh, somatic, you know, trauma or like, you know, some kind of somatic meaning, like some kind of stored energy pattern that's kind of in our body. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we can think of, for me, I think of like, you know, thoughts are what take over our brain, our mind um, and emotions reside in our body. And, you know, I know that sounds a little quacky to some people that are not used to thinking like that. Like for most of my patients, that's like a new, like, what do you mean? It's in my body. My emotions are in my body. Right. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I, I give them this exercise of like, you know, next time you feel stressed out or you feel something, tr- you know, triggers you or, you know, it's usually easier with the more mundane triggers. Like, you know, someone cuts you off in traffic or you're, someone annoys you like a stranger that does something that you know, you're not really tied to it. You know, it's not about you, but you still feel irritated. Right. It's, when you notice that pause and see where in your body you feel that irritation, you know, gotcha. like, um, like when someone pisses you off, just where in your body is it? Do you feel it somewhere? And just really kind of focus on, on the, the feeling that's happening within you that's triggering the thoughts, the irritated thoughts. Right. And when you do that, then you can also just kind of, I mean, that's powerful to just be able to pause, you know, when you're irritated to notice it, that in itself is usually 
pretty significant because it allows you to detach from the emotion that's going on within you. Right. It's, Mm, Oh, that's just this feeling. It's not me. It's just, Oh, that lives here. Right. Mm, You know? Right. Um, And, you know, um, and so that itself is great, but also understanding that there is a response that lives. There's like a, a, feeling that re- resides in you. And the bigger the trigger, the more intense the body responds. So, you know, when our significant other or our, our, our family member triggers us, you know, and we're kind of like this kind of, you know, sometimes people go into like this almost rage, you know, whatever, you'll feel it. Like you, you may not be able to take that step away to be mindful of it during because you're kind of overcome with, with the thing, with the feeling. But maybe afterwards, you know, when you finally like kind of, snap out of it a little bit <laughs> right <laughs> you know you right. can just kind of you can kind of be like oh yeah i feel that like this whole area or i just feel it like it's all like you know in here all in here you'll feel it's there's an intense sensation in your body right mm-hmm. so that's where things like reiki somatic release work you know whatever that you know there's so many types of somatic release work that's tr- that the purpose of that is to try to help you um, acknowledge and hopefully release some of it, right? Well, from a physical therapy perspective, it's interesting because what I've started, what I'm, what I notice is that um, like, so for example, if some people have like a, they notice the sensation like in their back, you know, or like deep in their chest. Well, that corresponding area in their back, those muscles are often tight. Right. So it's like sometimes like, you know, when, when I look at recurring pain, I'm like, oh, well, this area of your back is really tight um, and we release it and they feel better and it comes right back. And then I mm-hmm. see them again and we release it and it comes right back. Well, that's a sign. OK, well, what's going on here? Maybe it's a postural thing. There's a deeper postural issue. There's a um, maybe the way they're breathing, the way they stabilize. That's allowing that to tighten back up. OK, well, let's say we addressed all that. It's still coming back. You know, your posture is good. You're breathing right. Why is this coming back? Um, You know, that's when sometimes, you know, we start talking about these things, you know, like, all right, we'll see when you feel irritated, see where you feel it, you know, and if you feel it in that area, (laughs) right, Mm -hmm. then maybe some somatic release would be helpful for you, right? Because what what happened, you think of your, your muscles as like, guarding and responding even internal traumas right Mm -hmm. so our bodies do that for visceral issues so for example if if we have issues with our lungs if we have issues with you know our colon if we have issues with um our reproductive system you know the muscles around that area are going to tighten and guard and then we get knots and trigger points and the muscle hurts on top you know and yeah like you know i can help with the muscle pain but if it keeps coming back We have to get to, well, why is that muscle continuing to lock up? And sometimes it's because there's a deeper visceral issue going on. Like you have like some colon issue or you have like, you know, endometriosis or you have like, you know, something going on with your lungs or a kidney, you know, like people know like kidney pain, you always get back pain. Well, your back is actually tight too. The muscle is tight and I can release the muscle and you feel better, but then it tightens back up because the kidney, it's, the muscles are tightening to, because they're like, hey, there's something going on with this kidney, right? right. But the same so, with somatic issues, right? Like, so if we have a somatic response that keeps coming up, the muscles around it will tighten up as well, right? Yeah, I find that so interesting. So I, um, not long ago, probably a month and a half, maybe two months ago. Um, so I, I carry a lot of my distress around my heart chakra, around my chest. <laughs> Um, I had some relationship issues, um, and there was a lot of other stresses going on and I was really, I mean, you know, just a lot of issues going on right here in my chest, Mm -hmm. um, a day or so prior to getting this, um, actually it was a, a a Reiki attunement. I I got, so I've been attuned with, um, Yusui for quite some time, uh, which is fantastic. And there's many different modalities of, of Reiki this particular time. I was getting an attunement, um, uh, Kundalini uh, Reiki attunement, and which evidently is very high vibrating and a lot of good stuff said about it. So I was like, sure, I'll try that. Um, 
But what was what I found was so interesting. So I knew a lot of around my heart chakra that it was emotional because that's just when stress happens, relationships or whatever, it just it just goes there, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. A day or so before, I pulled my back muscle and it was really pretty severe. I mean, it, it affected the way I walked and turned my head and everything. And I only had it for like a day, day and a half or so, but it was it was pretty intense. Um, so on a Friday, I had this uh, this attunement, this Reiki attunement. And, you know, it was very high vibrating, put me in like a, a weird, awesome spot for the rest of the day. I was in La La Land and it was pretty awesome. So, <laughs> but, but yeah, but Saturday morning I woke up and I realized that, you know, my chest pain was completely gone, which honestly didn't surprise me too much. I mean, I've right. been in this realm long enough to know that, you know, that that was largely emotional and um, Reiki attunements are pretty significant. And I thought... Mm -hmm that would largely go away. And it absolutely did. Mm -hmm. But what surprised me is, again, a, a day, day and a half before, I had a really severe pulled muscle in my back. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't just go away. I mean, right. but it did. But it did. Yeah. <laughs> it did. Like it there, did. Was, there was yeah. like no evidence that I ever, there was any, any trauma on my back at all. Right. Um, and right. it, it just was gone. Like it never existed. Right. And it was severe 24 hours prior. Right. Um, and, and that surprised me a lot. Right. Yeah. But you know, like, you know, and that, that's the beauty of really kind of understanding how, why is the body doing the things that it's doing and kind of having a respect for like, all right, this muscle keeps getting tight instead of being irritated by it. Right. Like, well, why is it tightening? Maybe, maybe it needs to be released. Maybe it's the way, you know, you're sitting. Sure. Maybe it's something simple like that. Maybe there is an, an organ thing. Maybe like for you, was, there's a visceral thing going on that, you know, is, is there. And like, you know, and sometimes when you, when you think about things, you can, cause sometimes it's like, well, what, what stressed me out? Like, what was I thinking about? And you can, you can think about it, put yourself back in that space, start thinking about it and see if that's where you feel it. <laughs> Right. You know, you can use it, you know, you can, and if you don't feel it there, or maybe that's not what it is, whatever. Maybe it is just your chair that you're sitting on. <laughs> you know? right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Validated my, my point. <laughs> uh, absolutely. I try. I try. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. Yeah. I think that's, you know, that's mostly like kind of the mindset that I'm treating in terms of like, uh, treating patients, you know, like obviously treating the, the muscle joint issues, kind of looking, looking at how the body's stabilizing itself holistically. So we can, you know, cause the way your body works is you have the solid core, you know, that's really stable and strong. And then your extremities, your arms and your legs just move fluidly and easily on that area. So when the gotcha. core gets weak, if the core is insufficient or weak, you'll have obviously any kind of pain throughout the torso, maybe it's neck, maybe back maybe or maybe it's like my elbow it has to work harder on this unstable base you know so so yeah so it's kind of like looking at the body holistically in terms of like physically but now also kind of really kind of broadening uh the scope of how the body functions um and adding in just energy awareness you know somatic awareness um the concepts, you know, the, the, the ability to quiet our mind and be still, and just kind of really kind of shifting that focus of like, what does it mean to like, um, for your body to heal, you know, like what kind of factors can we throw at it, you know, that you're open to receiving. <laughs> Cause I can talk about, you know, chakras all day and try to convince you, but if you're just kind of like, <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, yeah. what's the point? Yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly. You know, you hear it when you're ready to hear it. Well, I think it's just so nice that I, I would love to see conventional medicine and the mind, body, spirit stuff get more interwoven. I, I was sitting down with a nurse practitioner yesterday for lunch and she's actually part of an integrative group mm -hmm. and she, she's very discouraged because there is that label integrative you know, medicine, and she feels like that's just not the way they operate. 
Um, well, you know, the thing is, like, it's it's not for for a lot of people, but for some people, that is how they want to be treated. And it's like you, you're kind of a, you can't you can't appeal to the masses. You can only appeal to the people that are open to you, right? Like, mm. you know. And I think the the area is coming around. You know, like DC, yeah. Maryland, Virginia areas. Like, I agree with you. It's less of a stigma to like get acupuncture. You know, that's not a stigma anymore. There's so much research that shows that it's effective. Mm-hmm. You know, why would it be stigma? And even ac- even um, um, insurance companies now cover acupuncture. And I right. feel like things like Reiki and a lot of those modalities are where acupuncture was. You know, only 20 years ago. Right. And the fact right. that you're finding Reiki in in doctor, I'm sorry, in in hospitals, mm-hmm. um, right, is right. an amazing sign. Right. Um, and, you know, it, it would just be nice for that to happen a little more quickly. <laughs> and, yeah. um, and you know, we're, like- we're, we're on the trajectory, though, right? Like, you yeah. know, progress is not always linear, um, but sure. we're getting there. You know, like we're on we're definitely getting on the right track where this idea of energy and becoming aware of our energy. And and that's why I think even like the mind, body, spirit I don't use the word spirit. I use the word energy because it's a little more accessible than spirit. <laughs> okay. Even. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> not know? quite, not quite as etheric. Right. Yeah. Like spirit, mm-hmm. like, all right, right, my angels, like, and I'm like, yeah, your angels, but also. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. That's fine. You're not there yet. That's fine. <laughs> <We're talking about laughs> energy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your, your energy. So, so like even just kind of being mindful of the words we're using to express the same thing, because the words are just pointers, right? Like, and some of the words are sometimes a little too woo woo for people, even though we're really saying the same thing. Right. Gotcha. So, um, so for me, like, you know, I'm just like, you know, just energy, like, you know, like, you know, when you have a mosquito bite and it's, you know, don't, can you feel that if you hover your hand above it, it's warm, like that's energy, you know, like we have energy through our whole body and, you know, whenever there's any kind of dysfunction going on within our body, that energy is a little off. Right. Um, so how do we restore that, restore a better flow, I guess. Right. I mean, there is all sorts of science that, that backs cranial sacral uh, right. therapy. Um, and, and it is, I mean, it's um, pretty impressive mm-hmm. um, how, I mean, I've had that done before and I, I was kind of blown away. Yeah, I saw the video on your site. Of, uh, yeah, yeah. And like Psyche, I don't know if you're all familiar with Psyche. That's that's another one. All sorts of studies have been done on that. And it's just so, uh, so a therapist friend of mine was started doing it on her traditional um, clients that mm-hmm. she had for years. And, um, and it was great because she, you know, she presented this option to use Psyche on her traditional clients. And, you know, some of those clients were like, sure, I'll, I'll do it. And after she um, started administering that, that practice with them, they, they were like cured. Like it really helped them out a lot. And so much so that she started losing some of her regular people, yeah. losing them because she was curing them, not losing yeah. them because right. she was unsuccessful because they were yeah. being cured and which was wonderful. Uh, but, yeah. then, but then it created other challenges for her. Cause then she had to pick up more clients in order to fill that spot. Um, so that, that's kind of my, my personal experience be, um, behind Psyche. Um, that being said, and that can also be found on, on the website. Um, I think it's heart math Institute that studies okay. many of these uh, modalities. Uh-huh. Um, and what's the guy's name? Not um, Bruce Lipton, but is it Joe? Dispenza. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. Joe Dispenza, he speaks of that. I think cranial sacral therapy, a number of these other methodologies that are supported by like science and studies and mm-hmm. the Heart Math Institute, which helps to support a lot of that sort of thing. Um, and so we'll, hopefully we'll see more things like that be regarded as a, a real, um, you know, effective therapy by a more traditional, um, you know, traditionally trained professionals. Yeah. Right. Um, right. Meanwhile, until then, you can go to Karma Hub and find right. them. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So, you know, like this, this site is great also, like, you know, to advertise to 
other healthcare people, like, you know, it's kind of like, oh, you can refer yourself here, but also refer your patients here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, it's that thing where it's like, um, the more work you do on yourself, the more you can vouch for something, right? Like, it's like, don't vouch for for something from a, in theory, it should be good, right? Like vouch from it, vouch for it from a space of feeling the benefits yourself. Like you can right. really bump for Reiki, Reiki, you know, like, as can I, you know, right. and kind of like, you know, experience different things and just see how you feel, you know, and now you can describe it. I remember I was talking to a, a patient about somatic release and he was really hesitant about it because he was scared about, you know, I don't know if I'm ready for it. Like, you know, right. it, it, you know, I just have this, this kind of fear about kind of diving into that stuff. Right. And as someone that's done somatic release for me, I, you know, it was easy to have that conversation of like, you know, th- that feeling you lit that you're worried about experiencing just lives, lives right here, you know, mm-hmm. and just lives there. It's not like, Oh, it goes away. And then it comes up when you, summon it it just lives there all the time it's just low grade in your body just there's a that it's kind of like the hum of a refrigerator that's just always there and it's not till that hum that someone pulls that plug out of the refrigerator that you're like oh that's what quiet is (laughs) right 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 right. that's a good analogy i like that and that's Mm -hmm. what that's what i was explaining to him i was like it's not it's not this torturous thing what you realize as something is kind of brought up and released brought up but you know kind of re bring really kind of feel it and released is how familiar it feels you're like oh yeah i feel this all the time and you know yeah it's a little bit magnified right now because i'm focusing on it but yeah that's very familiar and i was like it's not this like oh like i don't know if i want to go there it's so liberating to have to have that plug pulled from the fridge you know Mm -hmm. and to even know what that what that's like because you lived with it so long you forgot what it's like to live without that home well you know sometimes um when you have that release sometimes you do kind of relive parts of that emotion i will say sometimes it is a little bit of a, a journey and it is uncomfortable and you experience it and let it go mm-hmm. other times i mean sometimes what happens is it just it just goes away and you don't even really know what it was and it's right. you don't really have to kind of relive it or experience it it just yeah. kind of melts away and then you find that it's gone right um, and that just has to do with the different types of modalities and what you choose to use and and how it resonates with you and i think that's just so cool because you know sometimes it is uncomfortable mm-hmm. other times you just happen to pick the right one Ding, ding, ding. Mm-hmm. And that's just gone all together. And you don't yeah. have to go through any sort of uncomfortable experience. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's, you know, when you know, when you notice, you know, almost everyone has some kind of somatic something stored in their body, mm-hmm. unless you're enlightened, unless you live in, as an enlightened being, which most of us don't, you know, you've got, you got stuff in you, you know, yeah. and it's kind of like, you know, just becoming aware that there's stuff in you so that you can, even if it's just the acknowledgement that there's stuff in me and I feel this irritation is stemming from this thing that's right here or this thing here, you know, there's a sensation creating space between myself and that is a huge, is a huge first step, you know, yes. because now it's like, I'm not this angry, rageful person. I'm just a person that has some rage inside of them that like I can just acknowledge. Right. Being you know? able to and step I- outside of yourself and being able to look, from afar at what's going on and saying, huh, I, I want to correct that. I see, I see this. I, mm-hmm. I know where it's coming from. Now mm-hmm. let's do something about it. Or even just be able to step back and realize that you are upset about something and then anal- you know, um, figure out kind of like, why is that occurring? But uh, mm-hmm. stepping outside of yourself, I think is a, is a huge tool that, uh, yeah, it, it took me a while to, to get there. Yeah. Yeah. But I now mean, some now sometimes when my my teenager pisses me off, right? I can be like, <laughs> okay, so what's really going on here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? why does it bother me so much? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. But that that's the beauty of the journey, right? Like getting to the point where you're really just kind of looking at all the things that are pulling you out of your sense of inner inner peace, right? Mm-hmm. As like a curiosity, 
as a, huh, why is that? Why is this thing bothering me? Like, who cares what that person said to me? Why am I bothered? If I'm really grounded in my truth and I know who I am, you can call me stupid all day. I know I'm not stupid. You know what I mean? Like, right. it's, it's not going to piss me off that you call me stupid. I'll be like, sounds like you got some issues, homie. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. Yes. <laughs> That's got nothing to do with me. Right. <laughs> so, you know, anything that pulls us out of that sense of uh, knowing who we are is an opportunity for us to be like, what is that that is allowing me to go over there? Right. You know? Now it's just curiosity. Now it's like, huh, look at that. <laughs> but but that's really powerful, I think, you know, for empaths, right? Like people that are more, I mean, I think everyone has the ability to be empathic, right? Like to feel someone else's energy, but whatever. Um, but some people are very sensitive to it, right? And right. if you're not aware of the sensations happening within you as being someone else that you're right. able to absorb, Right. That can be really hard for you, right? Mm-hmm. Like because you're kind of you know, riding someone else's train, right? That you know? it's like you don't have control over it because you're right. not you're not in aware of it and in control of it yourself. Like, and so I think that's why a lot of like empaths are like, it's easy to be a recluse. Like, now I'm not going to parties. Nope, I don't I don't mess with people. Nope, I'm not. I'm just going to stay in my house, you right. know, because it's overwhelming, you know, to just constantly be absorbing people's stuff, right. You know, and so, yeah, I don't know, you know, especially for those kind of people, it's really important to learn um, energy balancing things, you know, and like having some kind of like um, grounding practice. Like that's like it. That's like, you know, those people are really powerful and those are the really powerful healers, but they have to get to the point where <laughs> they're able to really kind of be in control of what's happening within them. 